is a Learfield presentation of the Seminole Sports Network. This is Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Jeff Colhane. All right, good to be with you, Dose fans, on a Wednesday night back here at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. It is another edition of Inside Seminole Basketball with the head coach Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane. For the next hour, we got you covered talking all things Florida State hoops live on ABC 27 and all across the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. And happy Valentine's Day to you lovebirds out there. Thanks so much for being here with us. Coach, you got your, your garnet on. It's kind of red for Valentine's Day. You're dressed for the occasion, big guy. Well, I'm glad you reminded me that <laughs> red is a Valentine's Day color. <laughs> I knew you'd be all over it. I knew you'd be all we, we love that you're here with us here on a Wednesday night talking all things Florida State hoops and uh, I know over the last couple of games, our squad has fought. They've, uh, they've been in the mix. We played a couple of teams that have uh, done some good things with the, their game plan and how they've executed over the last couple of matchups. Well, I think that um, we have improved offensively. Uh, we, we, we have a rating system that's it's been around for probably 50 to 60 years called OER and DER. And, and I, anytime you are getting at least one point per possession, yeah, that's no, that's excellent. That's, that's elite on the offensive end. But normally you like to try to keep your opponents to, you know, sometime a point eight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's excellent. Uh, but right now our opponents are like one point plus uh, on the defensive end. Yeah. So we've improved on the offensive end, but we faltered. Uh, on the defensive end, and that's something we, we definitely need to fix. Yep. Uh, I, I'm, I'm having fun watching your guys on offense right now because the way they're able to get to the basket, the way they're able to score the basketball. Last night we shot 44% from behind the three-point line, 8 of 18. I know the outcome at the end of the day was not what we were looking for in the, in the, uh, the scoring column at Virginia Tech. And I'm sure for you, there's areas where you see opportunity as well and improvement even with the success we've had on the offensive end so far the last few games. Well, in, in several of the games that we've lost, uh, Carolina, uh, Clemson, uh, some of the games that we've lost, mm -hmm. th there seemed to always be a defining moment in each game. And, and the ones that games that we've won, uh, we have been the one initiating a rebound, tip in, put back, draw a foul. Uh, the ones we've lost in, in those situations, we didn't get a rebound, uh, gave up a drive. Uh, they hit their free throws, we missed ours. Or we get a turnover uh, trying to force something on the offensive sure. end that leads to the opponents getting an easy basket. Um, and and uh, we, we have been inconsistent with our defense. But it seems as though we get much better with the offense. You go on the road, you score 75 points. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty good. But you should be able to keep your opponents in a, in a low field goal percentage. Last night, I thought that, number one, we got hurt on the free throw line. We missed our free throws doing those mm -hmm. critical parts. And I also thought we gave up too many offensive rebounds. Um, that means that we, we need to rebound as a unit a lot better. We don't seem to have that seven-footer in there that we've mm -hmm. been accustomed to having to, to clean the boards up. So we have to rebound by committee, and that's where I think that we, we another area where we need to improve. Some of that stuff, you know, you talk about uh, just the 50-50 the balls overall. I mean, that's just that's a bounce here and there, right? Maybe with a little luck, maybe with a little extra uh, effort, per se, uh, with, with some of those things that, that uh, could swing our way in some of those games. Well, we, we, we had the one sequence there that where we missed a couple free throws, yeah. missed a couple layups, and then, and, 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 and then turned the ball over. Drop the pass. And, yeah. and, 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 and we dropped the pass. Those things are going to happen, but this, you normally try to eliminate those, and when you're kind of on point defensively, you make those things go your way. Yeah. And I think that's an area where we got to turn it up a notch. We got to get a little bit more focused. Uh, maybe a little more aggressive and in tune. But even on the offensive end, it, when we, as efficient as we have started to become, uh, we have our moments where we're still not moving the ball consistently yeah. enough and, and we haven't faltered the last couple of games that we've lost right at the, in doing the critical parts of the game. The, the thing that I'm encouraged by, those are things that I think we can, we can improve on, those things we can 
we can fix. But said we we running out of opportunities here, yeah. so we we got to get busy. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Got a great show for you tonight here live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Our uh, student athlete, our player that will join us is sophomore forward Cam Corn. A little bit later on, we're looking forward to that. And coach, we'll talk about him uh, more later in the show, but. This guy is a magnet for buckets right now. Over his last eight games, he's at 80% from the field, scoring the basketball, and it's been uh, a lot of fun to follow him when he's been down near the hoop. Well, there's no doubt that he's probably been our most productive post guy. Uh, you probably say, well, why is he not starting? Well, a lot of because I'm trying to stretch he and mm -hmm. Ganey uh, quite a bit. Um, it, you know, we don't want to get any one of them in foul trouble along with Deontay. And uh, when one gets a foul, gets a foul, or gets a foul, yeah. we normally try to rotate another one in because we need the full complement all three of those guys, uh, giving us that effort, sustaining the effort for a long time. Cam still is not back in tip-top shape, but he's, but he's playing hard enough where he's actually come out of the game. So, uh, same thing with uh, with, with Ganey. Mm -hmm. uh, Ganey, gosh, I mean, he's given us all we had. Yeah. All he's he given us all he has. And, and, and but he's because he has not played very much in the last year or so, he's not quite in the, at that level that, of conditioning that we would like for him to be yeah. in to be able to sustain the effort. But while he's on the floor, he's containing the dribble, he's blocking the shots, he's, he's finishing around the basket, and, and he's hitting his free throws. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we're looking forward to talking with Cam Corn a little bit later on. He has been a key cog for this Florida State basketball team off the bench, the sophomore out of Allen, Texas. Time now for our truest hero of the game. Truest is the official retail bank of Florida State Athletics. Care, it's a total bank change, or see how, at truest.com. And Jamir Watkins' coach continues just to keep stepping it up, especially with how he's getting buckets for you, scoring the basketball, back-to-back -back games of 20-plus points for Jamir, and also last night, a new career high of 26 points with what he was able to do at Virginia Tech. And uh, his stat line was outstanding. Seven of nine from the field, three of three from three, nine of 11 from the free throw line. And he had his uh, usual activity on the defensive end as well last night. Well, there's no doubt that he's finding a way to fit into our system. He's very much more efficient. Uh, I think he's uh, really, really giving us a big lift. Now we just got to get a couple other more guys to go with him and be as consistent as he has been. Yep. Jamir Watkins, our truest hero of the game, as the uh, the Seminoles uh, were in Virginia Tech last night. Virginia at home this past Saturday and get ready for the Duke Blue Devils coming to town this upcoming Saturday afternoon inside the Tucker Center. It's a 2 p.m. tip here in Tallahassee. I'm told a sold-out crowd for the game uh, at the Tucker Center on Saturday afternoon, but we do have tickets here tonight on site that we're going to uh, give away and that you'll uh, win here tonight at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee as well. Just get started live from Glory Days as Florida State Athletics would like to thank Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee for their support of Florida State Hoops. Glory Days Tallahassee, the home of inside Seminole basketball. When we come back, we'll talk with Coach more about Jamir Watkins and his continued development and more about this Florida State basketball team as we dive deeper into the final full month of the regular season here in February. That and more is on the way as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Easy. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. It is a Valentine's-themed night here at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Even some interesting Valentine's-themed trivia questions during the break that uh, our in-venue host, Kylie Brennan, was throwing out there. Uh, I didn't have the answers for any of those. Did you know the answers to some of those, Coach? Absolutely not. I had no idea. Chuck Walsh for the win. Media Relations Director Extraordinaire for Florida State men's basketball. Uh, by the way, did you see uh, the cupcake? Mary got you the Valentine's Day cupcake here? Well, well I actually was wondering because I wanted to take a little bite of it, but I didn't I, want to be rude. I, hey, it's all you, <laughs> Coach. That's all yours, my friend. Go ahead and uh, snack on that during the, uh, the show here, here tonight. <laughs> it's time now for What's on Tap, brought to you by the official craft beer of Florida State Athletics, Oyster City Brewing Company. Check out the tap room on Gain Street and... The, uh, the newly released, not so new anymore, but the outstanding legacy lager. Great for any Florida State celebration. Grab some of that for your game day viewing of the Duke game coming up on Saturday. 
Uh, this time of year, we've talked about this a little bit before, the fine line of practice, rest, development, and working on some of the things you look to prove and pawn. How, how, how would you describe that to people out there? Well, like today, uh, obviously we got back at 5.30 in the morning. We had some flight delays, and that happens to you sometime during the course of the year. And you want you guys to come back and, and get, it, get back in the groove of classes because they are quite, they are, quote, student, student athletes. athletes. Student yes. athletes. Yes. And we've been very fortunate, gosh, we've only had what, one or two kids in, in 20 years not graduate. Those have been with yeah. us for four years. Of course, we, we've had some one and done. But our kids, are, our players have all, always good about coming back and take care of their academic business. Uh, and, but physically, uh, this time of year, you have to be careful uh, about uh, taking care of your body. You know, we always encourage our guys to come back and, and, and get some uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's massages, sometimes it's just um, you turn an ankle yeah. and you just have to get treatment in those areas, eat, eat well, um, get plenty of as much rest as possible. And then as coaches, we try to monitor uh, the, the, the level of, of, of effort that we um, exhibit in, in practice. Um, Sometimes we might walk through things maybe, uh, as opposed to sometimes going full speed and uh, uh, being extremely aggressive. And sometimes you just have to go with a feel. Uh, sometimes you, we hope that we're accurate, uh, but it's very important that you give special attention to your guys this time of year because, you know, some guys play more minutes and they get, have more contact. And so you have to find a way to minimize that so you can stay as fresh as possible. Glad you brought up the academic side of things because uh, over your uh, tenure as a head coach here and at your, your, your multiple stops during your career, 98% graduation rate of, uh, of four-year players uh, with, uh, with your basketball programs and specifically here at Florida State University. It's a huge emphasis for you, your staff, and I know you're very appreciative of the academic staff uh, and support as well with what they bring to the table for your guys on a day in and day out basis. We we very we're very fortunate to have an administration that gives us all the academic support that we need in order for our guys to you know be successful in those areas. And uh, I can't say enough about the help the Charlie Hogan and his his, his staff uh, when they follow our kids and give them advice and monitor. Uh, what they are doing academically has been, it's, it's been unbelievable. And yeah. you, I can't say enough about uh, uh, them helping us stay on top. And then we have certain rules and regulations that, that we govern ourselves by that hold everybody accountable from an academic standpoint. So it's important. And, and I realized as a youngster growing up how much it meant to my family. Sure. And uh, being, you know, first generation uh, college graduate. In my, in my family, but I set the table for my brother Willie, mm -hmm. and then Willie, Willie goes to college, and he, he, he meets his wife in college, and, and his two kids go to college, <laughs> and my brother John, uh, his, his, his son goes to college, and my sister Pam, her, her, her son goes yeah. to college, she Pam went to college, so it, it, it changed the whole culture, it holds the whole uh, culture of your family yeah. by people understanding the importance of academics, so we try to to place as much emphasis in those areas as possible, and we're very fortunate to get support from our athletic department and the cooperation from our players. I don't know if you have a, have a favorite example. Do you have a favorite um, success story that comes to mind right away from the academic side uh, of any of your players off the top of your head coach by chance? Well, I only, I only the best example is, is, is my path. Mm -hmm. I realized how important it was for me to find a way to set the table for my siblings. Yeah. Now, uh, and that's how I operate. You know, that's what set the table for me holding everyone accountable because when you going through school, sometimes you don't, you don't have the, the maturity to look how much it's gonna mean to you and your family down the road. Well, and then by being at this level, uh, for so long, even far back when I was at the University of Kentucky, and I went to, I went to the University of Kentucky. And yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I don't want to. Well, we won't say it. <laughs> you know, we won't say it. It was a long time. We ago. won't say the school. But 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 I learned. Uh, we only had two guys that graduated the 12 years I was there, and, and, and I realized how important it is. I mean, like uh, yesterday before the game, Kevin Grieving, who played on the first team 
And when I went to Kentucky, matter of fact, the team we went to the Final Four and played uh, Coach Wooten as his last game. Wow. Uh, that was, and I, I guess you can imagine playing against uh, UCLA wow. and John Wooten's last game. I want you know, kind of hurt the fishers felt back. Oh, they? boy. I don't want to know. <laughs> I was frustrated enough last night, Coach. I don't want to know what that was like in but, John Wooden's last game as a head coach. Yeah. But, but on a serious note, mm -hmm. I, I think that I, I realize how much it has meant to me and my family yeah. and my siblings. And I, I don't want anyone to not enjoy uh the, 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 the things, the good things that happen when you take care of business on the academic Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely right. Talking with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, here live on site at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Got a great show for you here tonight. We'll talk more about this Florida State basketball team, some of the things Coach likes right now, some of the things he's getting ready for. He and his team are getting prepared for with Duke coming to town on Saturday afternoon. Hey, as a veteran-owned business, Carver's Discount Cleaners provides high-quality dry cleaning services at affordable prices. Visit one of the three Tallahassee locations for convenient same-day services. Don't get taken to the cleaners. Choose Carver's, proud dry cleaning partner of Inside Seminole Basketball. We'll take a time out. We're back with more. Stay with us. We've got uh, Coach's favorite segment coming up. Our question from the crowd, trivia as well. Our giveaway tickets were sold out to the Duke game, so somebody's going to the game here in the crowd at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. That and more on the way as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. This year's membership drive, we're calling 20 for 20. It's 20,000 members supporting 20 teams. By joining Seminole Boosters, you are allowing Florida State Athletics to strive for excellence in all areas of the athletic department. Thank you for helping us get to 20,000 Seminole Booster members. To become one of the 20,000 Seminole Booster members, please go to SeminoleBoosters.com and join today. Dining room, picnic, tailgate, or conference room. Whichever table you gather around, we'll be sure there's plenty to go around. Bring them together with barbecue. Grab Sonny's to go or let us cater your next shindig. Available for pickup, delivery, or set up and serve. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. for the Shy Creation Trunk Show at the Gem Collection. When a rookie stunt driver meets the trainer who thought he'd seen it all, again, there's bound to be action. But this is no ordinary blockbuster. It's a Nissan sales event ad. Don't miss your chance to drive away in a new Nissan. Let's roll. Get a low 319 per month lease or get 1.9% financing for 60 months on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Act fast. Offers this good won't stick around. You're dialed in to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. And we roll along live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee on a Wednesday night. Welcome back in Inside Seminole Basketball here with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane as the Knowles preparing for the Duke Blue Devils on Saturday afternoon inside the Tucker Center. It's a 2 p.m. Eastern tip. We're on the air on the radio side at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. I say that, you got a big smile on your face. You're ready ready to go for the next one? Uh, well, I'm glad you reminded me what time the game, <laughs> the game is on Saturday. Well, you know, normally, like, you know, we just show up, but you said the game's at 2 o'clock this afternoon? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, well, for, thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. Thanks I'm here to, here to help. Uh, we, like you said, we got home at a unique hour this morning, and, uh, you know, sometimes the... The clock in the day can get can get changed up on you a little it, bit. It's interesting that we play games at all different times yeah. during the week. Sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's seven, six fifteen, seven fifteen, and during the week it's twelve o'clock on the weekend. Sometimes yeah. two, you know, it's all over the boards. And 
I, I never really paid a whole lot of attention. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't need to say anything. Uh, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the coveted 9.05 p.m. Eastern tip oh. on the road on a Tuesday night, Coach. Uh, but I know uh, TV indeed rules the world with some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, uh, I'll, leave it, uh, I'll leave it at that. We're getting to that time of year where we're into the month of February, final full month of the regular season, and people are, are positioning themselves for the NCAA tournament and the league, the ACC, historically, as you look back at the success of the league, even in recent memory, is right there at the top with uh, all the other leagues in college basketball success-wise, wins and losses in the NCAA tournament. It, it makes these games so valuable, so, so important here over the last few weeks of the regular season, and, and shows uh, the difficulty of it all. It also shows how, how great the league has been. Uh, throughout the uh, the years and uh, the decades as well. I think what what you have is uh, it gets it gets to become a sport. It becomes a sport mm -hmm. where everyone likes to sit around and predict who's playing, who's going to win, who's going to the, the, be the team, the Cinderella team that's going to come out of the NCAA tournament. And it's always interesting that at the beginning of the year, no one is held accountable for their predictions at the beginning right. of the right. year. Right. Yeah. You know, and then at the end of the year, no one would have predicted predicted that. Um, uh, FAU, San Diego, yeah. uh, the, the, the Final Four was, would have the same participants that they had last year. But one thing that, that's unique uh, about the ACC is that we become the, the, the team that everyone likes to root against. Mm -hmm. I mean, the conference likes to root against. And when you start saying, well, like the ACC is going to get three or four teams in the league. It's amazing. And someone else is going to get nine or ten teams that's in wild. the league. Now, now, what you do, you go back. This 15, 20 years, and you look how consistent the ACC has been through through the years in the tournaments. Yeah. And in, uh, in other words, um, like for instance, the year they were predicting that we were going to have very few teams from the ACC represent the NCAA tournament, then Duke and Carolina both were in the Final Four. Right. But if you go back and look at the Elite Eight, the Sweet Sixteens, we've always given a full count of ourselves and those teams that are in the NCAA tournament doing well always lost games to other teams in the ACC. Right. And so that means that uh, obviously that must be, if these teams have proven to be elite and they're losing games in our league, that means that the league is pretty good. Very good. Do you think with just all the, the metrics, the net ones, uh, the net whatever you want to call them overall, why isn't there more of the – consideration of league success in the NCAA tournament taken into account when you're factoring in who should be in for the best 68 teams in the field? Well, there's no doubt there needs to be a, a more in-depth conversation about how we are evaluating and selecting teams to participate. The, what you do in November doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be that same team yeah. in, in, in March. And some teams get better during the course of the year, but if they started out slow and didn't have a great November or December, mm -hmm. but now they're really good in January, February, and March, why should they be penalized? Because now they've improved to the mm -hmm. point they're one of the better teams, but the way it's set up now, you have statistical analysis of what you did in those earlier months when maybe you had a new team. Maybe you yeah. got people who are just getting together. Maybe you're recovering from an injury. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe it just takes teams a little longer to get together. So how do you determine who's the best team that needs to be participate participate in March mm -hmm. as opposed to the teams that were good in, in October, yeah. September, De De in December, November, and December. So we need to have a conversation of how we're going to e evaluate that. Now, I've always been a proponent. We need to add more teams. Mm -hmm. We already have a, a play-in date in, in Dayton. Correct. So why not just double the, double the field and you right back before you start the tournament to what, you, what, we, what we have now? On those, on those two play-in days. Yes. Instead of having play just two ga games, play four or six games each day. Well, well play, it doesn't matter. Figure yeah. out, if we can put some out on the moon, I believe we can figure out <laughs> <laughs> how we could get the it tournament. It seems like we make it a lot tougher in college athletics. Yes, coach. yes. But, but it's the greatest sporting event yep. in the world. So why not give other folks an opportunity to enjoy that and elevate the interest? Yeah. I think it would be a total bonanza. I mean, it's, oh. it's the greatest event now. Now, double the field, get more guys participating, 
you know, try to create more uh, opportunities for people. And I think that would be great. Well, and, and as, as in your experience, you know, what success does for teams and individuals in the NCAA tournament with the moments that they're able to make, it creates opportunities for people for a lifetime overall. No, no, no. I just think that it's time to have another conversation. And uh, we've been kind of talking around it. Yeah. But for support of a reason, I think um, it's a little challenging for the networks now that have signed those loan contracts to make adjustments. I don't know what the reason is that we can't add more teams. I think that, that that's good for everybody. And, and uh, I've been a proponent of that. But I'm not real sure anybody's listening to me. Well, they, <laughs> they should be. I'll tell you that. They should be uh, right now, that's for sure. Big games coming up here for everybody around the ACC, but certainly for Leonard Hamilton's Florida State basketball team. It starts this upcoming Saturday. Duke coming to town, the ninth-ranked team in the country. And uh, the last time uh, Duke was in town a couple of years ago, we uh, created a pretty great memory as well inside the Tucker Center. And so uh, looking forward to that opportunity this upcoming Saturday with a 2 p.m. Eastern tip at the Tuck here this weekend. Hey, ViStar Credit Union is here for Knowles fans. We're ready to help you reach your financial goals and life goals by offering you a better way to bank. We also give back, making the communities we serve stronger. Do good, bank better. ViStar Credit Union, proud partner of Florida State Athletics. Visit ViStarCU.org and go Knowles. Coming up next on Inside Seminole Basketball, we'll go to the crowd with our uh, question for the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. A trivia question. Coach may even give up his Valentine's Day cupcake. Maybe if you get the question right. He's not agreed to it yet, though. That, that hasn't happened yet. That and more on the way as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Here again, Cole Hay. Hey, we are back. Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee, Wednesday night. Welcome back, everybody. Inside Seminole Basketball with the head man, Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane. As the Knowles continuing to roll into February in ACC play, Duke coming to town. We'll get coach's thoughts on that matchup coming up a little bit later on in the program. Well, let's, uh, let's get right to it. It is one of our favorite segments of the show, as coach is ready for our question from the crowd, let's go out to Kylie Brennan here at Glory Days. Kylie, go ahead, take it away. Well, and it's not just from the crowd, Jeff. This is a distinguished individual that we are in the presence of. This right. is Andrew. It is his 21st season keeping stats for the FSU yes. men's basketball team. All right. So, yes. All right. Let's go. go ahead All right, and Andrew, it take over. it away, big guy. No difficult question. There we go. Uh, Coach, you have a deep rotation this year, which I'm glad to see. Can you talk a little bit about the difference that has made for your team this season compared to last season? And also, how do you keep the players happy with their minutes with that deep rotation? Well, the girls with you, what, what has happened this year, uh, we've improved in this area. Our guys are asking to, to, to come out of the game. Uh, and that's traditionally what we've done over the years. You know, a lot of teams in our league play pack line defense, and then they pick you up below the three-point line. They walked the ball down the court on the offensive end. And we felt that in order for us to compete, and we've, we've done a pretty good job over the years, that we wanted to play a little bit more of an aggressive style, picking up 94 feet, switching one through five, uh, maybe uh, you know, front in the post and doing some things that other people are more comfortable, that other people are not comfortable doing. They want to play more uh, contained type of defense. And we've always felt that we had to be a little different than everyone else because maybe, you know, that was, that's the style that has been successful for us. Well, playing that way requires you to sustain your effort for the full 40 minutes. And it's very difficult to do that uh, playing 38, 39 minutes like we did some of our players last year. It breaks you down. And in February, you beat up, you sore, and you don't quite have the same level of energy that you have if you cut your minutes down. Trent Forrest told me when he was here, you know, after he had left and was playing in the NBA, that he thought that he could have played about 24 minutes playing the way we play, and he'd been very happy and comfortable with that. Well, you wouldn't think that because most guys want to be on the floor, but the way we play, if you're on the floor, gosh, 30-something uh, minutes, you're finding, looking for a place to rest, and that's, that's not fair to your guys. So 
uh, I'm glad we haven't, uh, we got a little bit more of a rotation this year with healthier guys. Uh, we don't have the experience that we need to have the, to be a much better defensive team. If you've been with us from the beginning, you see we are improving offensively, but we still need to, need to get a little better defensively. It helped a little bit when we have those, those aircraft carriers back in the back line, <laughs> like Chris Kamaji and Fiondo Cabangela and people like that that could c contest shots and maybe even block them a time or two. We avoid from that. And, and we've been giving up a little bit more penetration. But those areas that I think we're going to improve on as we go through the rest of the year. All right, there you go. Andrew, thank you, thank thank you, you very, very much. Hey, what you say? Thank you very much for your service. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 21st year right there oh, doing statistics. He's seen some... Uh, He's been with the inner the whole time. Well, he, he, he's seen a lot of basketball. Yes. He's seen the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> always remember the good. Always, always remember the good overall. All right. I'm not sure if this is for the cupcake, or, uh, but we know it's for tickets to the Duke game I am, uh, on I'm not Saturday. Giving up, I am not, not giving, giving up? up cupcake. You sure? All right. He's I, not, I, he's, he can have my tickets, but well, there I can't you go. Give All right. There we go. I know how you love dealing with tickets. I know that. <laughs> Uh, Kylie, let's go back to you. Who are we talking to for our trivia question tonight? Who we got? Well, we're going to get right down to business because this is Jared, a junior okay. from the College of Business, and he All is right. ready to answer this question, right, Jared? Jared, as a can be. Jared, you ready? You ready to go? You ready to go to the Duke game? Oh, sure. Let's uh, go. I right. hope so. Let's do it. Okay, here is our question for Jared. This seminal is currently ranked eighth in school history in career field goal shooting percentage. Is it A, Darren Green Jr., B, Max Thorpe, or C, Cam Corrin? Jared, do you have, uh, have your answer? It's a big one. I think I'm going to have to go with C on that. Well, we gave a little foreshadowing earlier in the show. Correct, Jared. Congratulations. You are going to Duke game on Saturday, my friend. How about that, huh? Can't wait to be there. There you go. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. Go Dolls. Have some fun. Go no. There you go. Jared is going to the game. He'll be in the house. It's sold out on uh, Saturday, but Jared's going because he showed up to uh, Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee for inside Seminole basketball with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Jared, you might see Jared you know, maybe doing some uh, crowd surfing in the student section. Do, doing the chant. Doing the uh, war chant uh, <laughs> when things are going well for us on Saturday. Cam Corn going to join us here momentarily. We talked about Cam a little bit earlier on. What have you appreciated, Coach, about his work, uh, attention to detail, and how is his, his effectiveness for you uh, in his second year in your program right now? Well, I think his minutes are starting to increase. He's getting in better condition. Um, he normally goes as hard as he can, and he acts to come out of the game, and we can't get him back in the game soon enough. Uh, and we're trying to keep him out of foul trouble, so at least we have him to finish the game. And as aggressive as he plays, sometimes he has a tendency to, to make some <laughs> un un fouls. He play, play and getting after people, yes, uh, aggressiveness yes. overall. Yes. Going back to your conversation, the, the question from Andrew, which is a great one about your rotation. Last night you played 11 guys. You played 12 at times as well, and you're always looking to get – contribution from all those guys how have you liked how everybody is has grasped onto their roles and have you liked how the rotations have come together a little bit depending on what five you have out there on the floor at different times well i like to see our team communicate a little better and talk mm -hmm. uh, and that's what i think is hurting us defensively we, we have a, a bunch of guys who are somewhat quiet you know we, we, we we've been accustomed to having those personalities are always upbeat and talking and communicating and i think that the, the, with this team, because we, we're not very experienced in terms of playing together, uh, we're struggling in those areas. I'd like to see them even get more connected defensively with the communication. There we go. Well, we appreciate uh, Andrew and Jared. Questions in the crowd here at this segment. And again, if you're looking to go to the game, join us each and every Wednesday night here live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee inside Seminole Basketball. you got a chance to go to Florida State men's basketball games inside the Tucker Center. Hey, Florida Farm Bureau members get free tickets to select FSU men's basketball games. Just visit myffbf.org to sign into your account, then follow the props for attractions and sports and sporting events to get your two free tickets. Tickets offered on a first-come, first-served basis and are subject to availability. Not a Farm Bureau member. Visit myffbf.org and register to become a member today. Florida Farm Bureau Insurance, proud to support FSU Athletics. When we return, Cam Corrin, We'll stop by our main table. We'll talk with a sophomore from Allen, Texas, about all things Florida State hoops. When we come back, as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield.
dialed in to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Bull Hay. I rolled along Wednesday night. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We appreciate that and having a lot of fun here at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Great to everybody back out here with us on a Wednesday evening talking all things Florida State hoops as an Oles preparing and getting ready for the Duke Blue Devils. That's a Saturday afternoon tip inside the Tucker Center. It's 2 p.m. Eastern time. Can't wait to see a packed house at the Tuck here this weekend. Well, let's give a big round of applause. Our next guest joining us here tonight. Show him the love on Valentine's Day, everybody. Cam Corin here with us. It's good to see you, big Thanks fella. How are Appreciate you doing? You doing all right? Yes, sir, I'm doing good. Did you get some uh, some rest after a late return last night? Barely any, but I'm here. Well, we're happy to have you here. We appreciate your time very much. Uh, let's talk about your, uh, your season, your sophomore year. You're obviously uh, playing at a high, high level right now. How would you describe to people uh, how much fun you're having and how things are going for you individually as a player right now? Um, I'm having a lot of fun, especially with this new team. I'm trying to get back in the rhythm. Obviously, I was out for, I want to say, five weeks with a toe injury. So yeah. just getting back in my rhythm and uh, getting my conditioning back straight. So, but how, it's still fun. How tough was that? What, what was that period like? You're, you're uh, early in the year. You're in that rhythm. You're, you're doing some good things. You get hurt in the Colorado game in Daytona. That was such a fun weekend, I know, uh, for you guys with some big wins. And then you, then you had the toe injury. What was that uh, process like getting back? Honestly, it was more mental than anything. Like, I stayed in shape. I, I was in the pool. I was doing stuff uh, with less body weight than usual. But it was mental because I just wanted to be out there with my guys and sitting on the side. That was my first time ever being seriously mm -hmm. injured. And the first time ever missing games. No AAU games, no high school yeah. games. So. It was just mentally getting back uh, ready, but I feel like I'm getting back there. Yeah, absolutely. How you mentioned the mental side of it. Let's talk about the uh, the training staff we have here. We've got a new trainer this year, and Chris Clapton is doing a great job, I know, with you guys yeah. and, and all the support that he and the team doctors provide mm -hmm. for you when you have a little bit of uh, an injury you got to deal with. It was interesting because he came in a couple of days after I got injured. That's right. So yeah. he was getting acclimated or everything while he has to do with a broken toe. And it was <laughs> great because he worked me out. He, he came right in and took in where Damon was. Mm -hmm. So it was perfect to have Chris here. Yeah, he's been a, a great addition. He's done a fantastic job. For sure. uh, there's no doubt about that. You have been playing at, at an unbelievable level uh, with that. the way you're scoring the basketball, your efficiency, Certainly your help on the defensive end, blocking shots and, and getting after guys uh, down low and switching one through five. But these numbers right now, folks, for Cam Corrin, in his last eight games, he's shooting 29 of 36 from the field for 80%, 8-0 from the field right now. You know, that's like video game stuff, it is crazy, right? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I didn't even know that. How have you been able to do it? And, and just kind of walk me through your mindset, getting ready for games right now with what you're bringing to the table. Um, honestly, just finding the right shot, not forcing anything. Obviously, we have a lot more playmakers than last year, so I don't have to do as much. And I kind of just sit back, let them make plays, and find my shots where I can, and it's leading to... Was that 80%? 80. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great stuff, uh, to say the least. I know you spent a lot of extra time uh, in the gym. You've been working on your craft. Sure. I know Coach Jones, Stan Jones, as a, as a guy that helps out the big men quite a bit and has done great work. Uh, what's that impact been like on you? How would you describe Coach Jones and his coaching staff and how they help propel you guys and get you prepared? Um, I've said it before, but Coach Jones, he's like a father away from home. I can go to him about literally anything, but it's, it's really more off the court that I talk to him. I go to him before every game. He helps me get my game plan ready, and he's helped me a lot this year since I've been here, so I love him. Cam, you mentioned this team. This is a, a group with some new pieces, some new players. You're one of the returners, obviously, that is uh, looking to get this team uh, back in the NCAA tournament right. with some big games down the stretch. And you're playing, as Coach talked about, 10, 11, sometimes 12 guys a game. How have you felt that's, that's meshed together as you guys have learned each other throughout the year and continuing to learn each other deep into ACC play? Um, it's way different than last year. Obviously, our rotation wasn't as deep. We had maybe seven or eight players we played last year. And now that I see how Florida State plays with 11 to 12 players, it's way different, and I love it. Like, you can play as hard as you want, come out, go right back in. And it's just the way that Coach Hand was telling us how it should be last year, I can finally see it, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're loving to watch uh, Cam Corrin uh, play the way he is playing right now. That is for sure. Let me say it again. 80% from the field in his last eight games. That is big-time basketball from a big-time player. And he's with us right now here live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee on Inside Seminole Basketball. Hey, here's your chance to win tickets to the final home game of the season, Florida State versus Miami on March the 9th.
Go to alumnihall.com or follow them on social media, and one lucky winner will receive two tickets to the game, an autographed Leonard Hamilton basketball, and a $100 Alumni Hall gift card. They just moved locations, so find Alumni Hall now on Timberlane Road near REI here in Tallahassee, or go to online, go online to alumnihall.com. That's alumnihall.com to enter. Stay with us. More to come with Cam Core and sophomore big man when we come back as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Here again, Cole Hay. All right, back one final time live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee with Cam Corn. We're back here for a couple of more segments. Leonard Hamilton will rejoin us here coming up momentarily. Hey, Florida State men's basketball is partnering with Champions for Literacy and Vistar Credit Union to promote youth literacy. Coach Hamilton and staff will be wearing green for literacy during their game versus Boston College next Tuesday, February 20th. You can join them by coming to Glory Days Grill on February 19th for a share at night where 15% of your bill will be donated to support strong readers here in Tallahassee. All donations will go to the Early Learning Coalition of the Big Bend to invest in quality educational materials. So come on out. That's on Monday, February 19th and become a champion for literacy. I right, we're back here with sophomore big man Cam Corn, young man out of Allen, Texas, playing great basketball right now. You prepped at Sunrise Christian Academy in Wichita, Kansas. That was two years ago. It's one of the top programs in America. You're going to go up against a former teammate of yours in Mark Mitchell, who plays for Duke right now. He's coming to town on Saturday. Uh, that's a pretty special program it you is. are a part of. Uh, what's that like? Do you guys stay in touch? And, and how often do you, are you able to stay connected with guys playing college? Some of those guys have moved on already to the NBA camp. Uh, we have a group chat that we're always in. We're always talking trash because there's another player, Dylan Hunter. We play yeah. in Clemson, so we're always just talking trash, but it's all love. Yeah, I mean, those are those are a couple of guys. I mean, that team overall, I believe Grady Dick was mm -hmm. on your team as well, yep. a, uh, a first-round draft pick in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, a, that's a, a pretty impressive group. What was that experience like for you a couple of years back? Um, it was a much-needed experience. Obviously, that was my first time on my own. I lived in a house with six or seven dudes, so... I had to learn how to do my laundry. My mom did my laundry all through high school. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I had to learn how to do everything on my own, and I really think it got me ready for college. Very, very impressive. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned uh, your parents. Your dad, Richard, mm -hmm. a, uh, a basketball player, a hooper as well. He played at Georgia for yeah. Hall of Fame coach Hugh Durham in the 1980s. He played in the Final Four for Georgia. And, of course, uh, Coach Durham's a Hall of Famer here at Florida State University. How special was that? when Georgia was here in town for that ACC-SEC challenge. We honored Coach Durham that night. Obviously, that has a, a special connection to your family, it feels like. It did. It definitely had a special connection. It probably hurt me a little bit because that was the game <laughs> after Colorado. Yeah. And I told myself, I'm going to force myself to play no matter how much it hurts. And it might have set me back a little bit, but yeah, if I had to do it again, I probably would have. But it definitely means a lot to me. Yeah, no question. Um, what, what was it like? Your, your dad uh, growing up, the impact on you that he had, playing uh, major college basketball the way he did? How did he influence you? Um, he influenced me a lot, just keeping me in the gym. It's weird. He doesn't like to talk about basketball a lot. He doesn't talk uh, about the Final Fours. He doesn't talk about all the years he played. But he definitely kept me in the gym, and he kept me humble. But he doesn't really talk about it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's impressive stuff. Great opportunity here on uh, Saturday afternoon with Duke coming to town. You guys will get ready over the next couple of days. What, uh, what's your, your initial thoughts in preparing for another big game? I'm told we have a sold-out crowd camp on Saturday inside the Tucker Center. Um, we got to approach it just like every other game. We're fighting an uphill battle now. Obviously, we started topping the league, and we're kind of sliding down. So we got to take it just like every other opportunity. Just play hard. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what. We, uh, we appreciate you coming out. Thanks we appreciate you, Tom. We're, we're, we're loving watching you play. Thank and, you. And hope you're having a blast doing it as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you go. That's Cam Corn, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for the sophomore big man out of Allen, Texas. He is doing great things right now for this Florida State basketball team. Hey, did you know that reading one text while driving takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds at 55 miles per hour? That's like driving the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. Put your phone down and set aside all distractions. Don't drive distracted. Arrive alive. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. When we come back, the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, rejoins us, gets us his thoughts on the Duke matchup on Saturday. That's when we return. Stay tuned. You're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield.
dialed in through inside Seminole basketball with head coach Will Hay. All right, one final segment with the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, live Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. It's been fun to be here with you on a Wednesday night. Our crowd has been great tonight. Thanks to everybody for coming out and joining us here on Valentine's Day. We have a big round of applause to Kylie Brennan for a quick Mets second there, our in-venue host. Did a great job. And also a big round of applause to Ava and Mia, the Golden Girls, who are here with us, helping us out tonight. We appreciate their time and efforts here this evening. Time now for our Keys to Success, brought to you by Scott & Wallace, the official law firm of Florida State Athletics. Scott & Wallace with offices in Tallahassee. Coach, we've got a couple of days, but getting ready for another great opportunity. Duke coming to town on Saturday, always uh, a great uh, opponent here in the Tucker Center Saturday afternoon. Well, Duke brings a uh, typical, talented, uh, deep um, uh, basketball team to the, the Tuck on, on Saturday. Uh, they, their seven-footer really plays on the perimeter, yeah. so that creates a different type of challenge for us than, than you normal, your conventional type teams who have a low post guy. He's he shoots threes and he posts up, and uh, they create uh, a lot of different challenges for them. And they're talented in every one of those positions. Yeah. And they even have about six guys that are capable of going off for 20 points every time you play them. Um, we've always had extremely competitive games against Duke. We know they're going to be prepared. And then once again, in order for us to be successful in the ACC, you got to be prepared every night. Mm -hmm. you, you can't take any possessions off. And uh, this year, it, has, it shows uh, that this. The league is, is really, really close to each other. Yeah. The games are very, very competitive. Yep. John Shires in his second year as the head coach at Duke. Do you notice any big differences with his teams compared to Mike Krzyzewski coach teams during your time coaching against the Duke Blue Devils? No, not really. I think that the tradition goes uh, continues to, mm -hmm. to move in the right direction for Duke. They've got great players, a lot of one and dones like they had last year. And, uh, I think they represent the ACC in an outstanding way. Yep. Coach, final thoughts? We appreciate you coming out. Uh, get ready now for a big game. Had a great crowd tonight. Had a lot of fun. No doubt about that. Yeah. I always enjoy coming and doing the show <laughs> and being among a lot of the, the fame. There you go. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate you coming on out. Thank you very much. There you go. Big round of applause for the head coach, Leonard Hamilton, with us live on site here at Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. It's a sold-out crowd inside the Tucker Center. Make sure to join us on the radio side Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern as Florida State takes on ninth-ranked Duke in a big ACC tilt. Big thanks to Leonard Hamilton. Big thanks as well to Cam Corrin. Also to Chris Cole from Mike Collins. My name is Jeff Colhane. Have a great night, everybody, and go Noles!